Hi everyone, Victor here again and I welcome you to this lesson which is creating and managing storage in Kubernetes and OpenShift. In this lesson, you will learn about some Kubernetes and OpenShift components such as persistent volume, persistent volume claim and storage class. If you're familiar with virtualization technology for enterprise environment, you would understand that the ideal or proper thing to do when configuring storage is to use external storage, be it in the form of SAN, NAS or NFS or whatsoever external storage to store your data for persistency, consistency and for high availability instead of using the local storage where your VM resides. And this same thing is applicable in Kubernetes and OpenShift. So let's look at the following scenarios. When you have pods of the same replicas distributed across different nodes and the container app or pod is the one which needs to consistently talk to storage either to write or retrieve data consistently. For example, databases, having the pod to talk to a local storage will definitely cause data inconsistency because the pod, because the pod in node A talks to the local storage in node A, while the pod in node B talks, will talk to the local storage in node B, and the same is applicable to node C. How is it even possible for the database application to be seen or have the latest or correct, or correct data? Hence, the ideal practice is that the port talks to an external or centralized storage. And even more so, like I've mentioned in one of our previous lessons, that ports are ephemeral in nature, meaning that a pod can easily die and when they die they are automatically recreated so say a pod which resides in node a dies and is automatically recreated in node b how will the pod connect back to the local storage in node a but if the pod is independent of the local storage as soon as the pod comes back up on any node it can easily connect back to the external storage, making data to be consistent and persistent. Therefore, for you, for you not to have data corruption or data loss, using an external storage is the way to go in this case. This is not even only applicable to databases. It is also applicable to applications that need to read data from some sort of files or storage for example if you have apps that depend on each other say two tier apps front end and back end and it is configured to access data through a directory or some sort of files to have data consistency the way to go is to make use of an external storage However, you may still configure your app to use a local storage as well as an external storage. It all depends on the way you want your application to function and how you want your environment to be. Just like in virtualization where the whole cluster can crash or where you would need to even tear down the whole cluster, the same can happen in containerization. So if the whole cluster goes down because your data or storage is independent of the cluster, your data is safe. So in summary, what we have been discussing are you can have a local storage or volume or a remote or centralized storage or volume. The local storage can be ideal in a few cases while the remote storage is ideal in many cases, just like the scenario we have stated. So we want 
a storage that is independent of the whole cluster and of course separated from the pod life cycle so it can be persistent and available on all nodes. So how are these PVs, persistent volumes, persistent volume claim and storage class related to storage? Basically, there are two cluster users. We have the cluster administrator and the, de and the developer or application owner. And the job of the cluster admin is to provision a storage or volume and of course a persistent one, hence persistent volume. Persistent volume is the storage itself and of course storage can be a local hard drive, storage server, storage box, be it Dell, HP, Synology and be it in form of any protocol say NAS, SAN, NFS or even cloud storage and just like you would normally create a volume and map it to a server with your IQN for DAS or iSCSI or WWN for FC you would also need to create a resource called persistent volume using the YAML and specify the storage parameters that is the volume size the protocol, the storage IP, the volume mode, either read-write or read-only, etc. And you should also know that persistent volume is not restricted to a particular namespace. It is available to the entire cluster. And we will look at how to do this, how to create persistent volume as we go on in this course. Going forward, when the persistent volume has been created by the, by the admin, the developer can now claim the persistent volume, hence persistent volume claim. So the developer needs to create a persistent volume claim resource and specify the parameters using the YAML also. So for example, there can be a large pool of persistent volume say 500 gigabyte one can claim in chunks per application so one can claim 200 gigabytes for pod a and another 200 gigabytes for pod b or even claim the whole volume it just depends on how you want the setup to be and pvc is restricted to a namespace unlike persistent volume we would also look at how to create a persistent volume claim as we go on in this course. And finally, we can also dynamically provision or create a persistent volume and that's where storage class comes in. Imagine a scenario where we have large environment and we have hundreds of pods running and this pod needs volumes so instead of manually creating persistent volumes or contacting the cluster administrator to always create persistent volumes one can dynamically create these persistent volumes by using storage class so when you create a persistent volume claim a persistent volume will dynamically or automatically be created for you and this can be done like i said with the aid of storage class and with a specific provisioner. The storage class can also be created using a YAML manifest. We, will, we can also specify the provisioner in the storage class YAML config file or manifest. We will look at how to do this too as we go on in this course. So I just wanted to have an understanding of storage in Kubernetes and OpenShift and having understood all of this we would see how to do this step by step in the next lesson we'll look at how to create a persistent volume persistent volume claim and storage class so thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel share like comment and subscribe when you do this it will encourage us to do more.
And thanks for watching once again. Bye for now.